Hello, I'm Stacy from Stacy McDonald Pottery Studio in Freeport, Illinois, and I'm going to be showing you how to make a simple plate. I'm starting on a tempered masonite bat being held to the wheel head using a Zion bat mate. I'm using standard pottery tools. The clay that I'm using is a reclaimed mix of cone six stoneware and cone six porcelain. It's nice and smooth and it's nice and soft. So I have three pounds of clay. I'm going to get it centered on the wheel. I'm going to make the assumption that if you're watching this video, you've gone through the basics and you know how to throw a bowl, maybe a cylinder. If you need to know a little bit more about centering and opening and all of those basic skills, check out my beginner wheel throwing bowl video. I have two of those. Once my clay is centered, I'm going to flatten it down. And before I start growing it, I'm going to clean off the bat. Now I'm going to be conservative in the amount of liquid I put on there. up my center and I want to leave the bottom about half an inch thick. So that's a little thicker than I want it to be. Let's try that again. That's more like it. Okay, so now to pull this out and flatten the center of my plate, I'm going to use my fist. I'm going to push my pinky out just a little bit and I'm going to put that in the bottom of the hole and then I'm going to pull it towards me level. I keep my sponge in my left hand to give a little bit of water when I need it and I support my, hand, my right hand with my left. So there's my pinky in the hole, and a little bit of water, and now I'm going to pull out. I'm going to keep it as level as I can. I'm making a lunch plate size. A dinner plate would be closer to four and a half pounds, maybe five. and level it using my rib. And I'm pushing down quite firmly. I want this to be level. And it looks like it pulled something out of my uh, clay here. So I'm going to try and compress that down. There we go. Okay. So once I've done that, I just pushed it, the rib pushed up a little bit of extra clay over here and just with the sponge I was able to remove that. You want to be careful that you're not folding any clay over onto itself with slurry in between because that will make your your pot unevenly moist and you can cause problems that way. So now for the rib. 
I'm going to push my finger down at the base where the clay meets the, the fat, and I'm just going to push in. And this hand is really just gently supporting and guiding that. Now I'm going to do a pull. I'm going to pull straight up to start with. Now, if I wanted to make more of a traditional style plate, I could cut off some of this rim or use a little less clay to start with. But I like to have a plate that has a bit of a, of a volume to it so I can use it for um, a stir fry or I can use it for spaghetti or something that is maybe a little sloppier that you wouldn't want to have on just a plain flat plate. So while I've I'm finished my pull, my walls are about a quarter of an inch thick, my rim is nice, nice and smooth. So before I turn, before I lay the rim down, I'm going to do my wet trim out here. And that's, that just makes my drying and my trimming much easier. make it easier for my wire tool to go under my pot. I'm just going to go under the edge with the tip of my tool and make a groove. It seems to help. So now I'm going to lay down my rim. I'm going to use my, my rib up against the rim. I need to wet the inside a little bit. Now here's where you have to be careful. Go slowly, have the wheel turning slowly, and you want to keep the, the rim at an upwards angle. You don't want to come out to where you're horizontal, otherwise that's gonna, your rim is gonna flop. So I'm going to just start to lay this rim down against my rib. And that's as far as I want to go with that. I want to have a nice voluminous plate or kind of a plate crossed with a bowl. The lovely thing about plates is that they give you some tremendous design potential. You've got this huge canvas. And what I like to do is give myself a line in the rim using my wooden throwing tool. And if nothing else, that'll give an edge for the glaze to break over. So, the plate has been thrown, but we are not done with this plate. Plates depend on a number of things for success. Compression while you're throwing seems to make a difference. So making sure that all of your surfaces are, um, all of your walls and your bottom are all the same thickness, a uh, nice consistent thickness. Even drying is super important. So you're gonna find that if you dry a plate, if you dry the top part of the plate quickly, the rim is going to come up 
and, and tuck in and that puts stress on the bottom. When it tries to dry, you're going to end up with a crack. So you're going to want to attend to your pieces and flip them when they're needed. Keep them out of uh, direct sunlight, keep them away from drafts, dry them evenly. doesn't matter if you dry them quickly. You can have it out in the sun with the breeze on it and turn it and flip it and, and attend to it and have it dry in three hours. That's okay. You can cover it with plastic and you can leave it for three weeks. That's okay. The important thing is, is that you have even drying. As soon as possible, as soon as your rim is set up to the point where you can, you can, the plate can support its weight, flip it over and let it dry from the bottom. I've got a tempered masonite bat here and I've had good luck making plates, just leaving them out on the table. And as soon as the uh, rim is, can support the weight of the plate, I flip it over on the table and then it, it releases when it's ready. And that tells me I'm ready to trim. I don't trim, I don't cut the pot, the pot off of the bat if I'm gonna leave it on the masonite bat. Um, masonite works, there's some MDF bats that work and there's plaster bats that you can do that with. You cannot leave a plate on a plastic bat. Uh, it, will not, it will not dry in the bottom. So I think that's all the tips I can give you for plates. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut this guy off. So I have it going slowly to make it easier for me to cut. I'm going to hold the wire tight between my fingers like I'm going to floss my teeth. I'm going to hold it down tight against the board and cut under the pot. So that's all I have to say about plates. Thanks for watching.